Uh, I want to introduce you to Lauren Drain. Lauren was a member of the Westboro Baptist Church, and she's got a new book out called Banished. And she talks about what it was like to be in the church. And we, we never talk about the Westboro Baptist Church because we find them to be really dangerously crazy. Um, but Lauren got into the Westboro Baptist Church. Her, her father was working on a film and, and then decided he liked it. And Lauren is here to tell us about being in it and getting out of it. Welcome to the program, Lauren. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. Your dad sold your baseball card collection along with a signed Babe Ruth card in order to fund the move so you guys could join the Westboro Baptist Church. How did this happen? How did he decide he wanted to join? Yeah, and and what was it like when you're I mean, when you realized you were going to be with the, you know, the people who are boycotting the the soldiers' funerals and, you know, that God hates everybody who's different. Yeah, I, to- I totally understand you. Pretty much he had decided after he went to go make the documentary that he wanted to join that church. He just he thought that they were right in some fashion. We had no religious background. I didn't have any religious background or upbringing, so I didn't really know, you know, what was right, you know, in terms of the Bible or otherwise. Mom, my mom kind of thought it in the beginning. She thought it was, you know, horrific that we could say things like who you know someone's in hell and this and that um but my dad kind of exerted a order amount of control over us that first year he brought back um started slowly in terms of like trying to indoctrinate us but he we lived for a year in florida he started teaching us things and um basically he took me out of school he took away my friends he you know i had no access to my friends or or family anymore this is this is what a cult does right yeah. And he did a lot of manipulation tactics with me, you know, saying I'm a rebellious teenager, you know, I don't make him proud, and he was, you know, he was verbally abusive, he was physically abusive, and he was saying, you know, I, I'm trying to raise you Christian, I'm trying to raise you right, you need to start listening to me, you need to start reading the Bible with me, and um, at some point I, I thought maybe I was being rebellious and I needed to listen to him, so I kind of thought, well, okay, I'd rather make my father proud than you know, sit around being what he's, he's calling a whore and this and that. Mm. So, okay, so he, he it was manipulated r- me into, into believing things. So after uh, the September 11th attacks, explain the service on the Friday that you talk about in the book. Um, explain what uh, that Friday service was like. Like when the pastor was preaching on it? Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's really hard. I've had so, I've had, I've been inundated with so many sermons and like, and just his him flying off the handle. I honestly can't even describe to you why they took that turn, why they decided they were going to start thanking God for tragedies and thanking God for people's deaths and such. You know, I really didn't understand that myself. And um, they they attribute everything to, you know, if homosexuals are, are ruining the country and they attribute everything to that, they therefore somehow make a connection that um, if homosexuals are to blame, acceptance of homosexuals are to blame, therefore God is going to punish the country in, you know, exhibit A, B, C, whatever. And not just that, Lauren, but everybody who, I guess, doesn't fight against them or right. try to expel yeah. them Here's, let me, let me get is this. hated by God? This is part of what you wrote in the book. Amazing. You said, how many people you suppose were working in that massively composed building structure called those World Trade Center buildings, the Twin Towers? There were five or 10,000 killed and counting all those passengers in the airplanes. They're right. very. It's very likely that every last single one of them, and I'm going to change the words, but you know who God hates if you've ever seen their signs. I'm going to change their words with the, the, the other F word to homosexual. Mm-hmm. But every last one of them was a homosexual or an F enabler. So in other words, mm. everybody was either homosexual or enabling the homosexuals, and that's why God wiped them, you know, wiped them off the face of the earth. Yeah, they're pretty obsessed with that topic. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't help but notice that. What is the... <laughs> t- oh, who who are these people? Who are they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, they're following a, like, a passionate personal agenda of the pastor and have never really questioned where where it really all started or if it's even if it's even something that's 
extreme. I mean, it's one thing to hold an opinion about something. It's another to make a whole, you know, ministry over and blame everyone in the entire world over something that you might be against. Yeah, and to and to try to take advantage of uh, the families of soldiers who have died in battle to try to take advantage of their grief and make it even more powerful grief and, and make it even worse for that family and their friends. And, and they don't care. They think that's, I mean, where did they get this agenda of hate? How did that how did that creep into the well, there's church? there's no compassion at all. How do right. they how do they miss the compassion part of Christ? I have um, I have my theory in in terms of how it started with the church. Um, the basically the pastor has told us that when he was a young person, he had always wanted to be in the military. He wa- he wanted to make it his life's work. You know, he's a Boy Scout, an Eagle Scout. He graduated with honors, and he actually was um, was at West Point for. a few days and decided he did not want to be in the military anymore and in fact he had some religious you know experience and now he wanted to preach against sexual immorality and has ever since hated the military and hated homosexuals so you could guess you can draw your own conclusions there so you think he mm-hmm. doth protest a little too much <laughs> yeah he may have had a you little experience was, of his own you think he was the uh, that's uh, interesting there, mm-hmm. did you ever get a feeling that he was the aggressor or the was he the catcher or receiver in that situation? <laughs> <laughs> nicely put I have no idea. I know, I know he hates that question, though, if you ask him. Oh, I know. He walks away every time. Yeah. But, I mean, but, you know. Lauren, how old were you when all, when all of this started uh, with the hatred and, and showing up at funerals and all of that? Um, the funeral picketing didn't start till 2005. I think my father brought us there in 2001. So I must have been around 19 or so. Mm. And you say that those were thrilling. I said it was thrilling. Yeah. I know that they made you feel like you're on a religious high. They're basically telling you, you okay. know, this is the epitome of your Christianity, is to protest things and to tell people their sins are taking them to hell, and that's why they're, you know, dying and such. So I was, I was constantly being inundated with this brainwashing mentality that that's what I was supposed to do as a good Christian, and they would use certain, you know, verses to to bring that message to us, and I had no other influence. I had no, no other... Um, spot to really question things, and it wasn't until I got a little bit older, like 19, 20, 21, where I was starting to read things on my own and say, this doesn't match up with the other things I'm reading, and I'm I'm not buying into all of it, but it it's a scary thing to raise your voice to everyone who's ever, you know, been in, in your life and been your elder and been your your, yeah, your yeah. guidance and everything. It's kind of scary. I mean, even your, sister, your little sister was turned against you within a week. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I don't blame her. She's being manipulated just as much as I was. And she's her own membership slash, you know, family relations is being threatened if you, she were to dare protect me. But you weren't, I mean, do you have any relationship with your family now? Do you talk to your sister? Do you talk to your parents at all? I'm not allowed to. That's the whole gang mentality. Okay. They cut you off, and they threat to, threaten to cut you off if you raise voice or raise opposition. They don't want any type of questioning happening in their church. They don't want any outside influence, you know. I mean, that um, sounds like the plan of Satan, it's pro- just it's the that. the programming that they do on the kids, and it's horrible. That's uh, one of the reasons I wrote my book, is that the kids have no freedom of thought, no freedom of opinion, and if they dare question anything, they're threatened to lose their family, lose their life, God will kill them, go go to hell. Just all these horrible things. And, of course, they're going to be threatened. They're little children. They're impressionable children. But you didn't leave on your own. You were actually banished. Correct. I was brainwashed. And that just shows you how strong it is. I was 15 years old, and I was able to be brainwashed in but a why, matter but of But wait, years. wait. Why did they banish you? And, and you didn't want to leave? Or you were just rebelling and you were at trying to time, change because you're... At the time, Glenn, I was not ready to leave. Uh, leaving would have meant leaving my family forever, having no contact mm. with three siblings of mine. I was mm. not ready mentally prepared to leave and so my family. what was the moment where they banished you? They, um, they said it was me communicating with a guy online who I'd never met. <laughs> but the reality of the matter is... I was asking questions. I was making them, making, they wanted to make an example out of me. They wanted to be like, look, you, you can't ask questions. You can't stir up, you know, trouble within the church and raise opinions and questions. We're going to make an example out of you. Do Not you, only that, but at the time, they were going through the big lawsuit with the Matthew Snyder. Um, and they did not, they felt all sorts of pressure. They thought I was going to leak information to the media. They're very conspiracy theorists. And they were thinking, well, 
we're just going to cut her off just in case she leaks information to the media. Lauren, I've got to take a quick break, but I, I, I just want to ask you, uh, do you feel, I mean, because your actions have hurt an awful lot of people. Correct. Do, do, you, do you feel regret about what you were part of? Or, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely, Glenn. I've, um, I've openly made apologies in my book. I've openly made apologies on my fan page. I've made a YouTube video. And I've, I'm doing everything I can to now help break up the church, bring people out, t- tell people I'm sorry for my horrific actions, and say that I, I'm ashamed of anything I was a part of there. I didn't, didn't mean to hurt people. I, I, I tell you, mean- Lauren, I, I, um, I don't think I ever thought I would ever say this to a a member, a former member of the Westboro Baptist Church, but I like you, <laughs> yeah. and um, I, I would love to. Um, I would love to spend more time with you. I'd love to see if we can get you here in the studio and and uh, and and kind of piece this together. And um, because this isn't about the Westboro yeah, Baptist you know, Church, this right. is this and is about I, something I would, bigger. I would love to apologize to more people. If more, you know, I would love to make it more known that I'm. I'm sorry for those actions, and I'm I'm sorry for the the children also. I wish I could be their voice and say, when they're children, they don't know any better, and they and I wish that there was a way for me to help that and say that they they don't know that they're harming people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel bad that even my own siblings are doing such harmful things in the Lauren, name of God. Lauren, the name of the book is uh, Banished: A Memoir, um, Surviving My Years in the Westboro Baptist Church. Uh, Lauren Drain, thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. I hope to talk to you again soon.